Today, I want to talk about a question that I have asked myself many times. Should I use the Nginx proxy manager or traffic as a reverse proxy in my home lab? Both are great solutions and that's why I already made some tutorials here on the channel, but I'm always searching for the best solution, the most reliable one and that integrates well into the rest of my home setup and where I can also learn something useful. It's an exciting decision to talk about and that's why I also wanted to know from you guys so what are you currently using in your home lab. By the way, thank you all for your feedback and your support. It's, it's just great to see that so many guys of you are building home labs and experimenting with uh, self-hosting. And it isn't really surprising to me that many of you are using the Nginx proxy manager because it's just great for that. Also, some are using traffic and other reverse proxies, which are probably also great. But let's dive a little bit deeper into to these solutions and let me explain to you what I'm currently using in my home lab and why I'm doing it this way. Regardless of where you are in your home lab or your IT journey right now and your prior knowledge about reverse proxies, let's recap why we're using them because this is really important to keep in mind when we compare the Nginx proxy manager against traffic. So the main purpose of a reverse proxy is to sit in front of a web application and forward your client connections to it. And this web application can be anything. It could be an administrative dashboard, a password manager or even a website. In home labs, I guess most of you will run several self-hosted applications and workloads and that's no different for me. I'm for example running my own password manager with Vault Warden, I'm running Portana to manage my containers or other administrative web interfaces like my monitoring solution with Grafana. And I usually put all of these web applications behind a reverse proxy. This is great for securing your applications because if they don't work on the HTTPS protocol, like many smaller self-hosted apps, the reverse proxy can do that for us. It also makes the management of certificates easier because an HTTPS connection always requires an SSL certificate to encrypt the traffic and validate trust between the client and the server. And managing SSL certificates can be really annoying. I still remember a few years ago you needed to buy trusted SSL certs from a vendor. With Let's Encrypt that became much easier because you can now get free SSL certs for them. But you still need to manage these certs because SSL certificates always have expiry dates so you need to refresh them from time to time and free SSL certs from Let's Encrypt usually expire every three months I believe. Anyway it isn't a long time. So assume you need to do that for every web application that can become a painful task and here reverse proxies obviously make things easier for us because you now have a central point to obtain and manage these certs and both the Nginx proxy manager and traffic as well are great to automate the certificate management via Let's Encrypt they can obtain and refresh those trusted SSL certs fully automatic. So that's a huge benefit for me why I'm using reverse proxies in my setup. And that's very well on both solutions. The other advantage of using reverse proxies is having one central point for incoming client connections, which you can then forward to different backend systems. Sometimes reverse proxies also have features like load balancing or can integrate with other solutions. And here are probably the most significant significant differences between traffic and the Nginx proxy manager because the Nginx proxy manager is a small open source project that only runs on Docker while traffic is a cloud native application proxy and part of traffic labs ecosystem. The Nginx proxy manager was the first Docker project that I've used in my home lab to simplify the configuration of an Nginx web server that I have used before. And that really made things a lot easier for me when I was self hosting some applications and quickly wanted to make them accessible with SSL certificates. Because it runs on Docker, it can be perfectly integrated in your own home lab stack when you're running some containers with web applications. It has a nice and clean web UI so you don't need to mess around with configuration files or complicated terminal commands. However, once I started to look into Kubernetes and container orchestration, I came across traffic. And traffic works perfectly in these cloud native solutions like Docker or Kubernetes because it can integrate with backend providers and automate the configuration process. It also has a web UI dashboard, but the main configuration is done in files or container labels and arguments that you would need to include in your deployments. It also works as an ingress controller in Kubernetes and that is the main reason why I'm using it there. But also in Docker it works very well. By the way, I also created two videos about traffic if you want to know how you can use that in Kubernetes or Docker. So check them out, I will put you a link to them in the description 
down below. So to summarize it, the Nginx proxy manager is very easy and intuitive to configure because it's using a nice and clean web interface. Traffic on the other hand is a bit more complicated, but the advantage is that it can integrate with backend providers. So once you do the initial deployment and your configuration, it's easier afterward. My current home lab setup is a virtual Linux server running on my Proxbox instance. By the way, if you're wondering how exactly I'm running this inside my new server rack at home, I'm currently building this and there will be a new video series about my home lab and all the new stuff that I put in there. Hopefully I will finish it soon. And this virtual Linux server runs a Docker stack that I'm managing mainly with Portainer and I expose all the web application containers with traffic as my reverse proxy. Traffic allows me to use wildcard self-signed certificates in my internal network that I've uploaded in the trusted CA store of all of my clients. And I configure it by adding labels to my Docker containers. So this tells traffic which container it should expose for which hostname, if it's using TLS and so forth. The deployment template for traffic in Docker is relatively simple. I've documented it on my personal GitHub page, so if you're interested in that, you can just take a look. Uh, you'll find that in the Docker Compose folder under traffic. And on my Kubernetes cluster in the cloud, I'm using traffic as my main ingress controller. Again, a similar configuration, but instead of using self-signed certificates, I'm here using trusted SSL certificates from Let's Encrypt that I validate with an API token of my DNS provider Cloudflare. I've also configured it to expose any new ingress objects with a trusted SSL certificate and a corresponding hostname. This is nearly fully automatic. And with that configuration, it is very easy for me to secure web applications in Kubernetes. I'm still working on HA capabilities, by the way, so there is a better way of managing certificates in Kubernetes with a cert manager. But hey, this is another topic I'll probably make a full tutorial about. Anyway, once I create my ingress objects, traffic takes takes care of getting the cert, exposing the pods and so on. And this makes it very comfortable for me to quickly test new applications in Kubernetes or set up new services. And that's the main reason why I started looking into traffic once I learned more about Kubernetes and cloud solutions. And if you also want to learn more about that, I quickly want to show Sivo to you. Sivo is a cloud native service provider that makes it extremely easy to spin up your own Kubernetes cluster or also Linux servers in just a few minutes. They offer you flexible and fair pricing for these services, which you can easily manage through their web interface. I use their services to host my WordPress blog, for example, experiment with Kubernetes spin up new Linux servers and automate my cloud deployments with Terraform. Really cool stuff you can do with it and the best you can just try it out with their free credits and take your time to see how it works. For example if you have never used traffic before and you quickly want to get started you can spin up a Kubernetes cluster or a Linux server and just start playing around with it. Sivo is a great place for that of course you will find a link to their website in the description down below. You probably already noticed that overall traffic is undoubtedly a much more professional and enterprise ready product. And that's why it's often used in cloud native solutions because it's incredibly flexible and powerful. But that also makes the setup and the configuration a little bit complicated. <laughs> I believe the main problem why many people say that traffic is too complicated or too difficult is because it's just poorly documented. And traffic also made some really weird design decisions like the different ways of configuration. You can configure it in a config file, use commands in the container startup or labels in the backend systems like Docker or Kubernetes. It's nice to have that flexibility, but I think it would make things much easier if traffic would just say, hey, here is how you can configure it and this is the only way to do it. That would definitely make the documentation much more readable and the product much more intuitive to configure. They also made some significant changes from the version 1 to version 2, which means you now have still some tutorials on the internet showing configuration entries that only work in the older versions, but not in the newer ones. And all of this really doesn't help to get started with traffic. And that's why I often found myself searching and searching through documentation and tutorials to just find a solution for specific configuration entries or some issues I had. But that changed once I became more and more familiar with traffic and now I see its advantages. I'm still not an expert in it, by no means, but um, I now have a solid understanding of how it works, I would say. 
And the more I use it, the more I love it. And because it also has some really nice features. Once you establish your environments and your deployments, adding new web applications to your stack becomes very comfortable. Especially when you're working with cloud native solutions like Kubernetes, traffic is just perfect there. In regards to that, the Nginx proxy manager seems to be the complete underdog. But that wouldn't be fair, because the Nginx proxy manager is also a fantastic project. Sure, it doesn't have all the features that traffic has, because it's just not made for cloud native solutions. But the question isn't really if the Nginx proxy manager or traffic is the better software. The question is more, what do you actually need in your home lab? Maybe you don't need Kubernetes or you are okay with manual configuration and you just embrace their simplicity and want to get things done. And where traffic has its weaknesses like the fragmented documentation or the steep learning curve, the Nginx Proxy Manager is a perfect alternative for a home lab that isn't less mature as a solution. Nginx is one of the most commonly used web servers on the internet. It has excellent security features built into the product and it's very reliable and stable. And the Nginx proxy manager just makes the configuration of an Nginx based reverse proxy extremely easy for a home lab. So I believe this project is perfect if you are running a bunch of self-hosted applications or services and you want to protect them or make them accessible from outside. Maybe you want to expose web applications securely that don't come with HTTPS encryption or you just want to add some access lists based on users or IP addresses. You can do all of this stuff that you would typically need in a home lab. Sure, it doesn't work well with Kubernetes and advanced container orchestration, but if you just want to self-host some applications on a single Docker server, the Nginx Proxy Manager is a great solution that is much simpler to use and configure than most powerful reverse proxies or load balancers. But after using both of them for several months, using them on cloud deployments and internal networks like my home lab, I just have to say traffic is my favorite. And I will tell you why. The main purpose of a home lab, at least for me, is not self-hosting. Self-hosting is excellent for some things, but this is not why I'm running a home lab. As an IT guy working in that field for quite some time now, I'm always interested in learning and experimenting with new technologies that will help me to get better in my main job. And that's why I highly focus on Kubernetes, DevOps or automation topics even in my home lab. And here you will absolutely gain more knowledge when you're using a reverse proxy like traffic. And that's why I have replaced all of my Nginx proxy manager deployments in my home lab with traffic. But of course, it doesn't mean that you need to do the same. Maybe cloud isn't something you're interested in or you want to have something that you can just put in your home server and it just works and is easy to administrate. Then the Nginx Proxy Manager might be better for you. But if you are interested in cloud native solutions, if you want to learn more about web applications and Kubernetes, it is worth taking a look at traffic. But what do you think? What is your favorite reverse proxy and why? Maybe you are using a completely different solution like HA proxy or Nginx. Just tell it to me in the comments what you're using. Uh, that would be really interesting for me to know. And if you're not sure yet what you should use, it's a great idea to look at some solutions like the Nginx proxy manager and traffic. I hope this video helped you to do that. And as always, thanks everybody for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.